Let's solve the first 20 questions from the CSET paper too. So let's begin with the very first question. Now this question is a passage based question. It talks about uh, the conflicts among the various states over water. So basically talking about water disputes, the water stress regions and uh, the scarcity of the water. Now climate change has caused more demand based on the population and the need for agriculture, urbanization and industrialization. And there is a constant need to balance this out. So consider Considering that in fact allocation is a very important aspect and when ensuring this what has to be taken into account that a proper framework for allocation should be made and therefore A becomes the right option. I am not going through and reading the passage you can go through and the gist of it I have explained here. Uh, let's talk about the next passage question here. Now this talks about uh, the problem of anemia. A huge amount of population suffering from anemia and the key sentence here is given in the last line for an economy that will be more dependent on highly skilled work workers this possesses a severe challenge that means if there is because of anemia a cognitive loss malnourishment it would ultimately impact the skilled worker so that means for rapid economic growth as envisaged by us attention should be immediately paid to health and nutrition so d becomes the right option for this question the next question that we have is again a passage based question it says that uh, in india uh, the agriculture is being affected by climate change however if the people are being taught, the farmers are being taught about the issues of climate change. They are not going to understand it and accept it. So uh, what has to be done? The perception for adoption or adaptation to a new aspect has to be taken into account. Now, what is the most important way that it could be done? So the most important thing is the risk perceptions of the farmers are important to motivate them for adopt, adaptation decisions. So if a farmer wants to adopt to certain changes, uh, it's very important to motivate them and that's the only way out because otherwise there is no reason that farmer would shift. And unless and until government pays an important policy making role, this won't be a possible issue. The next question is, Raj has 10 pair of red socks. So this is pair of, uh, pair of shoes. Okay. So 10 pairs of shoes means 20 red shoes. 9 pairs of white means 18 white shoes. And 8 pairs of black means 16 black shoes. Now, he randomly picks one shoes, shoes one by one without replacement uh, from the box to get a red pair of shoes to wear. What is the maximum number of attempt he has to make? Now, here, how many shoes he shoes? The next is, in how many ways a batsman can score exactly 25 runs by single, uh, so exactly 25, not rims, runs, okay. Sorry for the uh, mistaken typing, okay. Now, uh, a, the, uh, uh, the, um, the score could be 4 into uh, 6 into 4 plus 1, so that's one combination of such. Okay, the other combination would be 6 into 3, so 3 times is scoring 6 and then the remaining with 4 into 0 and 4 into 1 and the remaining could be filled with 1s. Okay, so this is the 6, this is the 4 and then the remaining with 1s. So there are two ways in which it could be done. Then 6 can be taken 2 times, then what could be the option for filling 4? Four? 4 could be filled 0 times, 1 times, 2 times and 4 times so this is 12 and this is 16 so 12 into 12 the 16 is oh sorry uh, 4 into 3 that is again 12 so 12 plus 12 is uh, 24 okay so this could be done 4 times then I can have 6 1 times and then 4 into 0 4 into 1 4 into 2 4 into 3 and 4 into 4 so how many times 5 times then 6 could not be taken any time and I can have uh, 4 how many maximum number of times I can have 4 maximum 6 number of times because 4 into 6 is 24 again so into 4 in 4 into 5 and 4 into 6 so that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 times so how many times I can add is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 so that's 12 12 um, 12 and 4 16 16 uh, 18 and 19 so my correct option here becomes 19 coming on next is 
There are four letters and four envelopes and exactly one letter has to be put into one en envelope. Now the question says exactly one letter goes into an incorrect envelope that's incorrect because there are four letters and four envelopes. If one of them goes incorrect the second must be incorrect as well. Okay so because in one only one can go so this statement is incorrect. Now how many ways two letters can go is let's say these are the letters okay so this could be one and one i could have one here and one here i could have one here and one here then i can have uh, one here and one here okay uh, then i can uh, have one here and one here then i can have one here and one here okay that's another way and the last one is one here and one here so one two three four five and six so six different ways in which uh, the two letters can go into correct envelope so the second statement here is stands correct so only two is the right option for this question the next question is a very interesting question you have to find out the remainder when these numbers are multiplied so i simplify 85 and 95 so these would be multiplied by 5 okay and then 94 i could have 4 uh, in the multiplication process for 96 so that's uh, 2 and 124 into 4 right so when i multiply this 4 this 5 and this 5 how much i get 25 and 4 that's 100 right so by all means i would have double zero towards the end of the number which is created by multiplication of this okay since it is 0 0 at the end and the bottom is 0 0 so 0 0 cancels out my remainder would in all case be 0 here a very interesting and a good problem to solve the next question is what is the unit digit in the expansion of this number so let me first multiply these values okay so this value gives me 945 so it's 57242 raised to power 945 now understand 2 raised to power is 2 2 raised to power is 4, 2 raised to power 3 is 8, 2 raised to power 4 is 16, then again 2 raised to power is 32, that means the last digit is 2. For 2 raised to 1 and 2 raised to 5, again my digit comes out to be 2. Now, since the last digit is 2, okay, this could either be 2 raised to 1 or 2 raised to 5. So, where it is 2 raised to 1, that means it is 5, 7, 2, 4, 2 raised to power 9, 44 into 2 raised to power 1 okay or plus 1 and this one would be 2 raised to power 1 so what is the unit digit for the expansion of this so the unit digit for the expansion of this would be 2 so 2 would be the unit digit for the expansion of this raised to power because this would be 2 raised to power 1 because it is 944 the number is to 944 plus 1 and this one would come from 2 raised to 1 so unit digit would be 2 here the next question here uh, a b c d are distinct numbers uh, sorry a b c and e f are distinct three digit number such that a b c plus d e f gives you one 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 that means this would be one carryover and this would be one carryover if i expand it very simple i can say c plus f is equal to how much 11 a plus d would be 10 and b plus e would again be 10 i add all these i get 31 so 31 would be my right answer as simple as that because these two digits would be such that one number would be one the other would be zero if that's not the case i am saying it's non-zero that means these are two digits which are different and i would have one carryover as soon as i have one carryover here i would have another carryover here to uh, to have a correct match and therefore a and e would be 10 and b and e would again be 10 so that means i add up all these numbers and this would give me a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f and this would give me 31 so 31 would be the right option for this question the next question here is uh, d is a three digit number so they are such that the ratio of the numbers to the sum of the digit is least that means the numerator has to be the lowest and denominator has to be the biggest now let's say i take a number 199 divided by the sum of the numbers here is 19 so that gives me 10 point something now the question says the difference between the hundreds and the 
uh, units please so that is 9 minus 1 so 9 minus 1 is 8 and therefore the answer would be 8 now understand a basic aspect what we are trying to do is we have to maintain a ratio such that this value that I get the ratio that I get is minimum that means in this case the units place has to be the biggest and the hundreds place has to be the smallest so when my hundreds place is the smallest and my units place is biggest zero i cannot keep in the hundreds place so one would be the number here and nine would be the number here so one and nine so the difference comes out to be eight you need not to do uh, calculations with each and every number but simple logic that you can apply to help this question being solved the next question the uh, emissions human put into the atmosphere will not affect the climate in the middle of the century but the technology would always uh, make sure that a future transition away from the fu fossil fuel uh, cheap or not cheap would have a terrible impact now this question is trying to say that waiting to deal with emissions until technology improves is not a wise strategy because sometimes you could have a new technology being built up and the world cannot af uh, actually afford a recklessness of the on the climate change and sometimes reducing the uh, emissions would be a huge cause so c itself is the correct option for this question coming on next is another passage question that says that environmental problems lead to health problems Sometimes we are unaware. Let's say I use a polythene bag, but I would keep using it because there I don't find any other alternative to it. But sometimes there could be a scenario where I know that what I'm doing is not correct for me and environment as well. It's harming both, but still I keep on doing it. Now, what could be the best statement to explain it as a rational assumption? We are likely to spend more money on cure than prevention because sometimes we don't see a way forward towards it. And this is an example we could say of a collective lethargy that has been made for our choice making behavior. The next question is um, targeting onto the junk food and the food habits and saying that most of the people are not eating the right food and our food systems are not addressing the nutritional needs of an individual. And therefore, what is very important in this question is that we must place a food based nutrition at the center of the policy debate. In a very simple word, this would be a simple answer to this question, right? So this is a uh, simple way of solving it. Now, this is a very interesting problem. You have PQRS and ST as the numbers given. Now, understand two of them are odd and three of them are even, right? So, break it into this category, okay? If these two are odd, okay, they become even because you are subtracting it. If two numbers are odd here, I add them, they become even. So again, it's an even. If one number is odd here and another number is odd here, they cancel out. So again, it would be even. So definitely it would be even in all the three cases. So this is a correct statement. But now take a case, I put an odd number here, I put an odd number here. Now, when I put an odd number where I have where I have two here, right? If I have two here and I put an odd number, now what would happen? When both of these numbers have uh, an odd number in either of these cases I introduce, what would happen? This odd number would automatically convert into an even number and therefore I can say that when it converts into an even number, others are even as well, so my answer would be even. So that makes this statement incorrect. I explain again. When you have two multiplication to any number and I introduce this as an odd number, so it would become even. The other three numbers are even only. Now when the other three numbers are even only, let's, that is incorrectly written, so it's R, okay. Uh, now, the other three numbers are even only. So when I have all the numbers as even, I cannot have the answer as odd. So this is an incorrect statement. One is a correct statement. The next question. Now, consider the numbers as... Uh, the prime number as 11, the composite number as 9. So 11 minus 9 divided by 11 plus 9, sorry, this is incorrect, divided by 11 minus 9. So that would be 20 by 2, that is 10, even, correct. Twice of 3, that is 2 into 11 plus 9, 
is odd. So 22 plus 9 is odd. And P into C that is 11 into 9 which is 99 is again odd. So all these three statements are correct with the simple two numbers that we have tried here. The next question is. A three digit number ABC on multiplication with D gives 370D. What would be the value of A plus B plus C? So let's say uh, my three digit number ABC multiplied by D gives me 37DD. Okay. Now let me keep D as 4. Okay. My numbers would here be 396. You can do the calculation. I have already done it. Okay. So it's 4, 4, 3 and 7. Now I have to add up all these three numbers. How much it would be? It would be 9 plus 3 plus 6. That gives me 18. So 18 becomes the right option for this question. The next question is for any choices of the value XYZ, a six digit number as XYZ, XYZ can be formed. Now the XYZ initial ones I replaced it as 101. 0, 0, 001 xyz okay now this is what this is merely multiplication of these three numbers so this number comes from the three numbers here and this is divisible uh, by the three numbers that we have given here so 7 11 and 13 become the right option so i can write it as 13 into 11 into 7 x y and z so this is x okay not multiplication time and this gives me the right answer for the divisibility so that's divisible again by 30 11 and 7 so d becomes the right answer coming on next 125 identical cubes are arranged so it's basically a 5 by 5 cube so i have 1 2 3 4 and 5 1 2 3 4 and 5 right now the question says it's a 5 by 5 grid of a cube now how many cubes are surrounded by other cubes from each side so how many cubes are surrounded by other cubes from each side so that is 3 by 3 so 3 by 3 here okay and on the six sides so uh, basically it would be nine cubes on this side so nine into uh, so nine on each side would be the answer okay so uh, how many cubes would be there it would be actually 27 cubes I, I, I don't have to find out the surfaces i have to find out the whole number of cubes okay so this would be 27 such cubes which would be surrounded by other cubes as simple as that so i can write it as 3 raised to 3 so it's 3 into 3 into 3 that gives me 27 cubes right the next question is how many distinct 8 digit numbers can be formed by rearranging the digits of numbers this way? So I have to form an 8 digit number. From that 8 digit number, let's say 1, 3, 5 and 7 are the digits where I can keep the odd numbers. Okay. So what are the odd numbers I can have? 1, 1 and 3, 3. Those are the only odd numbers. So what could be uh, the, the ways in which can it can be arranged? So 1 on all places okay so one on the first place one on the second place one on the third place one on fourth place so there are four ways and then this is a repetition because within the numbers there is a common number so two factorial by two factorial i solve this i get six so there are six ways under which i can have odd numbers that can be arranged again there are six ways under which even numbers can be arranged so six into six is 36 so there are 36 ways under which the various numbers can be arranged so the answer 